All right. Um, everybody all over Twitter is uh, talking about how this could have happened and what it means for this country that Trump has won the presidency. And um, just remember, it's, it's bad enough to have an orange turd back in the White House. Um, it's bad enough that they reelected him somehow, some way. Um, but at least if we had the House or the Senate in our favor, it still wouldn't be so bad. Um, I have not seen anything anywhere where it mentions if the House or Senate has been fully tabulated yet. Um, I had to go to bed pretty early last night. Um, I couldn't see how it ended up panning out um, with regard to House or Senate. Um, Republicans did have a lead at the time that I went to bed, but again, I haven't checked. I just got home. Um, and everybody is pretty pissed off right here. Doesn't make sense. So many Republicans voted Democrat. Kamala had far more people at her rallies. She won the debate. She won all the debates. We had all the professional analytical predictions on our side. I genuinely don't understand. Something doesn't add up. This is from Anonymous. In 2020, Biden got 81 million votes. Trump had 74 million. In 2024, Harris got 66 million. Trump got 71 million. 15 million Democrats decided to sit this one out. 3 million MAGA decided to sit this one out. No effing way. If God is real, obviously he isn't. Where is he? I don't get it. Are Americans just like Really, 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 really up and dumb. When you bitches are paying 18 bucks for a carton of eggs and being paid pennies working in the field because there is no one else to do it, and your kids have to work factory jobs because there's no longer school to attend, and shit like leprosy comes back, I hope you'll remember how hard you own the libs. What groups of Americans will be most harmed by a Trump regime? Wow, my pretties. Let's explain something here. Again, it, we could survive another four years of Trump if the House and the Senate, at least one of them, were also blue majority. But if they're not, what this means is there will be no more checks and balances. Do you understand? If it ends up being red majority across the board, plus a Cheeto is president. What that means is there will be no fighting against them. They will have a majority across the board. There will be nobody stopping them. They can do, they can pass whatever the hell they want. Whether you like it or not. They could feasibly decide to control every aspect of your life. 
and you know I, I know and people are saying yeah well there's going to be no more tax on overtime because there's not going to be any more overtime there's going to be no more tax on social security because there will be no more social security that's going away they want to take your social security away to give it to their rich cohorts and they're going to bring back jobs they want to bring back jobs they want to bring back everything from overseas they want to bring back plenty of jobs that'll be great there are going to be plenty of jobs and your elderly are going to have to work them your children are going to have to work them. There will be plenty of jobs picking vegetables and fruit in the fields because they want to get rid of all immigrants, particularly brown immigrants. If you're an immigrant, especially a brown immigrant, have you been paying attention to what these people have been saying? what they have been doing, what they have been tweeting, what they have been talking about. They want on day one to start rounding up over 11 million people and just get rid of them. There's going to be plenty of jobs. And with no social security, your 60-ish, 70-ish, 80-ish, mom or dad or grandma or grandpa are going to have to go out and get work no social security means no income because it wants they want to take it from these people and give it to their rich friends they want to take that too women's rights they could get rid of them just like that they could be gone on day one as quickly as they can churn this shit out. A red majority in the Senate, a red majority in the House, and a Cheeto in the White House. There will be nothing to stop them. All right? You watch and you see. Again, I haven't checked the if there is a final count on House and Senate majority uh, or if it will even be out anytime today or soon. I'll have to take a look at it. Again, I just got home. Uh, but yeah, you watch and you see how little they care about states' rights all of a sudden when they own the federal government. When they can do whatever they want unchecked because it's right across the board, they can pass whatever the fuck they want. There will be no one to stop them along the way. Uh, they won't care so much about states' rights because now that they own all the federal government, that's it. National abortion ban. National abortion ban. National contraceptive ban. Which means no condom, no plan B. Uh, no birth control pills for male or female. No sponges. No uh, IUDs, intrauterine devices, no spermicide. That's what no contraception means. You cannot protect against STDs. You cannot protect against pregnancy. You will not even have the option to make those decisions for yourself. Decisions involving what you do in the privacy of your own home. They could get rid of that in a flash. So, no contraception, but no abortion, because 
there's no contraception, uh, women's rights are gone, uh, and if they get rid of porn, if they get rid of abortion, if they get rid of contraception nationally, you know, made into federal law, you can expect the amount of rape, sexual assault to skyrocket. Attacks on women will skyrocket. You know those thousands of women, some of them you may have heard about on the news that die because they're denied proper care? That number will skyrocket. Uh, you won't just have women dying because they're denied care. You'll have women dying like they did in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, trying to look for back alley options to get their abortions or to get the fetus out of them because they're in pain or they're dying. It happened already in this country, and it could feasibly happen again. Uh, they want to get rid of LGBTQ rights. How would all you gay people like to go right back into the closet? Some of you gay people in this day and age, luckily, you may never have had to be in the closet because we were progressing as a culture, as a society. And um, now you will have to be forced into a closet you never had to hide into. They will make it all illegal. You will not be able to hold hands with your partner. You will not be able to perform any type of PDA, public displays of affection, Imagine not being allowed to hold hands with the person you're with. Imagine not being allowed to put your arm around their shoulder or give them a kiss goodnight where anybody can see it. They'll get rid of that. You better believe they'll get rid of that. They will get rid of all rights for LGBTQ and people will die because they will illegalize uh, gender affirming care. They will force people who have transitioned to use the opposite bathroom. Um, they will force everyone into detransition. You will not be allowed to talk about it in schools. And that's another thing. There goes what little quality education we have left. 60% of the people in this country already are dumb as a bucket of fucking rocks. They can't read above like an eighth grade level if they're lucky. 60% of this country. And yes, I know, I'm not just talking about the papers and the news articles, wherever you get them, uh, because news is supposed to be something we all have access to. And we are all supposed to be entitled to read and understand. Um, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. News articles being written so that a 13-year-old can understand it. This is everything now. People don't know how to fucking read. They, they can't comprehend English. I knew it was a problem. I went to college for communications and journalism, and I had all the AP English courses, was into all the Shakespearean productions and all that shit. I know proper English, and I have people wondering if English is my second language because they don't understand English. This is our country. This is what we live with. They don't understand very basic phrases. They don't understand certain big words. And I thought it wouldn't be that way because when I was growing up, when I was going to school, 
your goal was to get into college. And then when you got into college, you had these overachievers. Always, every classroom, everywhere you went, people with their heads lodged firmly up their own asses, thinking their shit didn't stink, thinking they were the smartest one in the classroom. We, we barely have that anymore, and it's going to get worse. Education is not a priority for the uneducated, and I don't care if it's read across the board. These people are not bright. They're uneducated, and they want to destroy the educational system. Do you understand they want to get rid of the Department of Education. That means nobody overseeing what you are to learn. There is no bureaucracy behind it. There are no curriculum. So what's going to happen? Are they going to appropriate all those buildings and that land? For our schools, are we not going to send kids to school anymore? Or will the lesson plan uh, be up to Congress, a right-wing Congress? Will it be up to Donald Trump or Betsy DeVos or somebody like her? What you're supposed to teach? Will it be up to each individual teacher? Do you understand what it would mean if every kid were homeschooled in this country? What if that's what happens? That there are no schools? My parents wouldn't have been able to sit at home and homeschool me. They had jobs to work. And getting rid of Social Security, getting rid of uh, paid overtime, uh, rolling back child labor laws so that your kids now have to work. Is that what they're going to turn this country into? Is every kid going to have to be homeschooled by people that aren't able to be home because they're out working 14 hours a day? Are they going to be left with their grandparents to be homeschooled? Because, you know, uh, women past childbearing age to these people are useless to society. That's what they think. Are they going to be told to stay at home and they can homeschool the kids? Well, if they get their Social Security taken away, they're going to have to go back to the mines, too. And you better believe that ends up happening, and these old people who should be lying on a Hawaiian beach in their golden years, instead of working as greeters at Walmart, if they're stuck having to do this so that they can keep their homes and pay for their medicine and pay for their food, you're going to have skyrocketing amounts of injuries and death on the job site. I mean, don't you people think, don't you listen to what they're saying and think about the repercussions? I mean, in a very short period of time, this country will turn into just a slum. It'll be a slum with even more. You think you're tired? You think your body hurts now? You think you're suffering because you can't afford medicine, you can't afford food, you can't afford children, you can't afford a home? Now imagine you can't even afford to have sex when you get home from work because you can't afford to get pregnant. Women wouldn't be able to step the fuck outside without worrying that they're going to be attacked. It's not just something you're going to hear about here and there anymore. It's going to
going to be a burden on the shoulders of every woman in America. And everybody is going to have a sore back. And imagine, they take away Social Security. So now you've got freaking Bing Crosby working with you over here. you got Phyllis Diller working with you over there. You think that's not going to make your job harder because you know these people should not be working for a living? That's supposed to be why we have Social Security. They get rid of that. These people will have no choice. And by proxy, it becomes a burden on you. <sighs> it becomes a burden on you. A burden on you at work, a burden on other people at work, it, it'll just keep getting harder and harder. It, it ain't going to stop. It, a ripple effect. It, it's just going to keep getting worse for everybody. And that's another thing. Forget your health care. You know, we were supposed to get better health care, not worse. And that would be something that I have to look forward to. Not only do my options suck when it comes to health care, but now I'm going to have a politician in between my legs every time I go to see a gynecologist. Now I'm not going to be able to get the information I need. I'm going to have to be on my guard when I go into my doctor's office. You people that fucking see this, do you not think about other people at all? And I could keep going, of course. Officially the second U.S. president to serve two non-consecutive terms. And you want to know something, if at least the House or the Senate is blue, pray to God that it is, because that would be our only saving grace. It will be our only saving grace. Uh, and I would say Biden should get his ass into gear, and at the very least, he wants to be a real hero for the American people. He could start right the fuck now and get as much shit done since, you know, he has immunity. The Supreme Court determined that he has presidential immunity. He can do whatever the hell he wants. At least he could try to make it as difficult as humanly possible. Give him a taste of their own medicine. Start signing executive orders, just like Trump did. Change as much of the shit as possible. I know somebody very personally who is not even a citizen. A DACA kid has been here since he was two weeks old. His parents, I don't think, are citizens. He is not a full citizen. He's in his fucking 30s. Lived here since he was old enough to freaking talk. And he's not a full citizen. Could not vote. His sister is not a citizen. She has a daughter. She's looking at going to college in the next couple of years. Already has a scholarship and everything. And her mother and her uncle and her grandparents may well disappear one day. Again, if you've been listening, if you've been reading, he wants to just rally up over 11 million people and throw them across the southern border. And this guy that I know 
doesn't think about it. He literally doesn't think the leopards are going to eat his face. I said, what the fuck are you so happy about? Day one, remember that shit? You're not white enough for this party. They want to bust your door down and forcibly kidnap you and throw your ass over the border. Your entire family is now at serious risk of being rounded up like a bunch of cattle and thrown the fuck out of here. And he tells me I'm being negative. No, I care about you. I care about your dumb ass and your family. After all the shit you've been through. Do you realize how close you are coming to being considered just just trash to these people and rounded up and just thrown the fuck out of this country? And then he's going, you know, I don't care. I'm not going to let anybody do anything. I'm not going to let anybody in my house. I'm not going to let anything bad happen. You won't have a fucking choice. Again, you fail to understand the reality of the situation. And by the way, there goes all of that badly, badly needed police reform that we were so desperately hoping for. You think these motherfuckers aren't going to have a jolly old time? Busting your door down and dragging your family out because they don't want brown immigrants in their country anymore. That's exactly what they've been talking about. That's exactly what they have been wanting. But I'm being negative. I'm being negative. And you want to know the ironic thing is? That happy-go-lucky positive attitude is what lost this fucking election. Gee, where are the 20 million voters who voted for Biden in 2020? Trump got about the same votes as 2020, but Harris lost 20 million people? Multiple co-workers talk about how pointless voting is and how they aren't going to vote. One of them was a black man who actually said MLK didn't do anything for black people. Grover Cleveland was the first to do this. He was the 22nd and 24th president. Because it's an echo chamber on Reddit. Reddit's an echo chamber. That's all it was. No. No, you want to know what it was? The tens of thousands of votes for Jill Stein and third party candidates in states like Pennsylvania. That's who you can thank for this. The scores of white women, because you know that they're all white women, who went ahead and did vote the right way, like that hick husband in the campaign video said, voting right against their own fucking interests. The minority voters who voted right the fuck against their own interests. You had scores of Latinos Scores of Latinos voting for the right because they actually think of themselves as the special Latinos. 
They think that the leopards aren't going to eat their faces. They think they'll be safe, and probably all these white women too. Like the mother, the family, the whole family of that woman who died because she, she couldn't get the health care she needed, I think in Texas. Where else? She died. Uh, I think the baby died too. And the mom's crying and whining to the news. Why didn't they save her? Why didn't they do anything? Why didn't they help her? Why didn't they give her that, that last minute abortion to save her? If they had the ability to save her, why didn't they do it? Because this is what the fuck you wanted. Voting against women's rights means you're also voting against your rights, you dumb fuck. It means you voted against your daughter's life, you dumb fuck. And now I have just this happy Mexican over here telling me I'm just being negative. You know, people aren't very bright. They don't have an education, but they all have an opinion. And all this shit is just opinion. They took over the fucking capital. These people literally smear shit on walls. You've seen the 50 million Klepper interviews. You've watched the shit things they do. You've heard the shit things they say. Yeah, we know they're fucking dumb. We know they're opinionated. Anybody can be opinionated. They can be as fucking dumb as they want. But it gets dangerous when they're in the presidency, in the House, in the Senate. Stupidity can be dangerous. This is how it's dangerous. And unfortunately, these people are not going to learn. These Latinos are not going to learn until they come after them and their families. Because they're still not white. You know, women are not going to understand until they're lying on the gynecologist table, until they're in the hospital, until their daughters are in the hospital, or they're dying, bleeding in an alley somewhere, or they're sexually assaulted because there's no more there's no more contraception or there's no more porn. How would you like that? How would you like not even having, telling your daughters and your granddaughters, not only do they have to worry about not getting the care they need if they need it when they're in the hospital with supposed professionals because the professionals' paychecks are more important than being a fucking doctor. Not only do they have to worry about that, but no contraception means uh, they shouldn't be having sex at all because you can't trust any man. You can't trust he's going to be able to hold his nut for 10 seconds and pull out when he needs to. So they're going to be the nice young ladies that the right wing wants them to be and abstain from sex. They're not going to go near any guys. And then you add a porno ban to that and, um, you know, more women rejecting you at every turn. What do you think is going to happen? Now they're going to have to pretty much expect a sexual assault. Not just worry about it if they're in some dark alley or if they're alone by themselves at night. They're going to have to worry about it all the fucking time. I can
could go on. I, I could go on telling you what the result will be and predicting how it's going to lead to point two, how it's going to lead to point three. And no, uh, I, I don't want to hear slippery slope fallacy and all of that. Um, that's when you say it based on something that isn't true to begin with. This is true. And it's a matter of common sense. It's a matter of intuition. It's a matter of good instincts. It's a matter of handing a, having a handle on reality. What do you think is going to happen? Think about it. What do you think is going to happen when all the old people in this country don't have an income anymore because there's no social security? What is that going to mean for jobs? What is that going to mean for you who's already working at that job next to poor lives that can't bend over? What is that going to do to your workload? What is that going to do to your elderly parents? Oh, I know, I know. They're not moving in with you, right? Well, what difference is it going to make? You can't afford a house anyway. Who are they going to live with? You can't even take care of yourself. Now you're going to have unemployed, unpaid elders to take care of. Isn't that great? Yeah. What's going to happen when there's a national abortion ban? And they say all of a sudden they don't care what the states say because that's definitely going to happen. What's going to happen when there's no more school to send your child to? You have to work. Who's going to teach your kids? Or will they just not care? Why not? You know, who needs college anyway? These kids are over 13, 12, 10. Why aren't they working? They should be working or getting pregnant. This is what they talk about. This is what they wax poetic over. Ah, yeah, yeah, working or getting pregnant. I wouldn't be surprised if they lower the age of consent. Now it's not just the adult women you have to worry about. It's also like eight-year-olds. Your eight-year-old daughter now has to worry about being attacked by some 40-year-old fucking fat insult bastard. Oh my God, I can't, and then, you know, that whole tariff thing. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna raise tariffs because we want we want manufacturing to stay at home. You think you can't afford your carton of eggs now, you dumb fucks. Wait until you're paying eighteen dollars for a dozen eggs. Wait until you're paying uh eighteen dollars for whatever plastic piece of shit they normally get from China that they could have gotten for $15 or $12. All of your prices are going to go up. They're even going to go up 